Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today I'm going to be talking about story over numbers. So when you're playing a tabletop role-playing game, um, you have to make decisions on if you're going to build your character from your player character from the perspective of story or from the perspective of numbers, okay? When I say numbers, I mean a strong build, right? Like uh, you have a build that will allow you to do maximum damage, that will allow you to not be hit frequently, and that will, or and or that will allow you to put out a lot of very powerful spells very quickly, okay? Um, so within, you know, within Dungeons and Dragons, uh, you have you have these very distinct build paths, and then, um, and, you know, you can really build a very powerful character if you choose distinct options at distinct junctures, okay? Now, in my opinion, when you start playing any, almost, when you start playing Dungeons and Dragons, 5th edition, um, and, and the story gets moving, really, it's very rare that you're going to actually be able to logically or effectively follow those build paths. And the reason why is the story is moving, the people you come across are moving. Um, these are all variables that are constantly changing, right? Your character is changing, your party is changing, your world is changing, the player, the non-player characters are changing, the setting is changing, the environment is changing. There's just so many parts that your, your little plan to get your build set you know, in just the right way, really isn't going to logically work most of the time, okay? Now, many, many players don't, just don't feel that this is true, and really go down the road of getting their build the way they want it, and, and really just kind of shoehorn the story to fit, or really make choices that don't make sense from a story perspective for their character so that they continue to, to follow this build, right? And I've really come to believe that this that you have to make a choice. You have to you have to choose story or numbers. Right? If you want your numbers to, to be strong, that's gonna come from a distinct build path. And you're really gonna need to put story into the back into the back seat. And a lot of players believe that they can do both. And I, I just don't really believe that's true. And I believe this stronger than I ever have because of my experience with Asian Shardgale, my current player character in the Nerdarchy Griffin Gaff campaign. That entire Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition campaign is online and you can actually watch it from beginning to end. And uh, Asian Shardgale's been in no less than like probably close to 20 different um, game sessions there. And so um, he has a very distinct story, right? And it, and that, that story, to me, is by far the best story I've ever told with a player character because the, the, the dungeon master, Ted Adams, has set up a structure that allows for epic storytelling, right? And, like, Ace and Shardgale has gone through this incredible journey, you know, that really has a lot of pathos. And there's a lot of sacrifice along that path. And now, right now, Ace and Shardgale doesn't even go by the name Ace and Shardgale. He goes by the name the Eyeless Seer, right? And the path from Ace and Shardgale, human wizard with a criminal background, to Eyeless Seer, a, you know, um, essentially a, a 15th level uh, wizard, human wizard, who now has a simulacrum where, you know... A, a copy of himself walks around with him and has an apprentice uh, hu female human wizard named Boken, who's this very dark, twisted figure. Uh, it's it's a long, it's, it's kind of a long path, right? And um, by the way, the reason Ace and Shardgale is called the Isle of Sears, he has no eyes in his head. He is an advent, he is a functioning adventurer with no eyes, right? Now, the reason why he, that is the case is I have a high-level magic item that I recently got called uh, the Robe of Eyes, which allows him to see in all directions simultaneously and to be able to true see all the time, right? So he sees better than he ever has with no human eyes, right? And I really, I really, I mean, this, this, this player character is amazing in, you know, as far as my history of player characters is by far the strongest player character I've I've ever played from a story perspective. 
Now, the path to get there, right, only came through sacrifice and through a very weak build choice, okay? And, um, and so, you know, something that a lot of players I don't think would have done, right? Now, um, so I'm going to try to make it quick just to explain how Ace and Shardgale became blind and the specific number sacrifice that I gave up to get that story, right? And, and, and my also, my point is, if I had not made these choices and made these sacrifices from a build numbers perspective, I would have never arrived in the story area that I did, okay? So, um, and I had to make choices and I had to make sacrifices. Trying to do the middle road would have made a very middling character, not an epic, cool character forged through sacrifice and choices and decisions, you know, so, uh, so basically here's the path that Ace and Shardgale, um, took to become the Isla Seer, right, so, um, so basically, uh, Griffin Gaff had a problem with these cultists, the uh, Narkitis cultists, and so what our, what our, what our adventuring party did was we found out who, who the, um, we found out who the traitor of Griffin Gaff City was, and we killed that traitor. It was like a big boss scene, right? And that traitor was the mayor of Griffin Gaff, and he was an, a high, a high noble elf. And we ended up killing him because, uh, you know, because he was evil, and he was, you know, he was taking over the city, and he was serving this demon Narkitis, and and we ended up killing him, right? Well, at that point, we put into place um, our our rogue player character, uh, who was played by Ryan Fryan. And so we put in, um, we put in uh, the rogue player character, and actually we then had him go through an election, and he was elected mayor of the city of Griffin Gaff. It took sessions and sessions to accomplish this, but now we had a player character as the mayor of the city, which was huge. And we invested a lot of capital, a lot of game time, and a lot of, of, of player character resources to get this done, right? So we put this guy, we put this rogue player character played by Ryan Fryant into position as the mayor of Griffin Gaff. Well, a few sessions later, um, Ryan had some, some life stuff come up and he could not play um, the rogue player character anymore. So the mayor became a non-player character. And this was very disappointing to me because I was like, we spent a lot of you know game resources for this. This isn't cool, right? But, so, you know, but I, I held on and I went to, um, to Ryan's rogue player character, who is now controlled by Ted Adams, the, the game master. And I said, hey, um, I have this plan for the city and I want to put it into place. It's called the Old Jat Armor. You guys can see the Old Jat Armor. It's actually an article on nerdarchy.com. And I want the town to build this armor. And it, and it, it, it will... It will bring the town together to do this, right? And Ted said, nope, we're not going to do that, right? And I'm like, ugh, right? And I said, well, you know, I'm going to get a little rough with uh, ro the rogue PC, you know, and tell him I'm very unhappy about this and I really want this to happen. And he's like, well, the council and him turn you down. And I'm like, okay, I'm out of here. So I, I, I go out. Um, you know, I, I left the council and went back to adventure with the party, right? Uh, and at this point, the rogue PC is really no longer with our group, right? Because the player can't play that character. So I, I explained to Ted, I said, you know, I, my, Ace and Chardgale now has beef with the NPC mayor, who used to be a PC, and I'm going to kill him, right? Like, <laughs> so, you know, there, this beef kind of grew over a couple sessions, and I was like, I, you know, my character is going to kill him because... That way, it's going to open up that that mayor seat, and then we can we can put you know someone in, right? And Ted's like, "That's really dark. You're lawful good. That could shift your alignment." And I said, "Well, you know, I understand, but I want to get back what we worked hard to get, which was control of this city. So if that's what I need to do, that's what I need to do, right?" So at this point, now we go another like two or three sessions, and each one of these sessions is like four hours long, right? Um, where I'm angling to get in a position to battle, um, you know, this rogue player character. And Ted warned me, he said, hey, you know, this, this, this player character 
actually has a stronger build than your player character, and you could die, right? And I'm like, yep, I fully understand that. Thank you for the warning. I do appreciate it, and I am ready to see my character die, but I want my chance to get our mayor ship back, right? And so Ted, yeah, he's a great GM. He let me, you know, game master, dungeon master. He let me continue forward, right? So uh, at this point, I actually, you know, told the rest of the group, I said, hey, this guy is not serving our city, and, you know, and he's a rogue, and, you know, we really need to, um, we, we need to get rid of him, right? And the, the entire rest of the party is like, nope, this is a bad idea, we're not down with this, Scott, you, you gotta go on your own. So I said, okay, no, no problem. So my character goes from the city of Griffengath all the way to the city of Dralic to engage this rogue player character in a different city all by himself. Now, I, at this point, had an apprentice named Obesid Strandon who had been with me for, like, no less than five, between five and ten sessions. An apprentice who was a human wizard, Earth Genazi human wizard, uh, who had a gladiator background, He's a great apprentice, and I said, you know, and I send him off. I said, Obsid Strandon, you have to go away, because what I'm about to do is so dark and personal that I don't want you to be mixed up in it. And I actually gave up my apprentice before this fight even even happened, right? Then, you know, I came to to do battle with the rogue with the rogue PC, uh, who was now an NPC, to who Ted was controlling, and I, you know, and I uh, I fought him. Right, and I and I went to kill him. Right, well, the fight was really brutal, and I lost my left eye. Mason Shargale lost his left eye. Right, but then he killed the rogue PC, and I'm like, dude, I did it. You know, I'm gonna go back to Griffin Gaff, and I'm gonna take the mayorship. Right, and um, and Ted goes, nope, that was a um, the person you just killed was a doppelganger. Right. And I'm like, oh, are you kidding me, Ted? Like, I gave up my apprentice, and I gave up my left eye to, you know, to kill this guy, right? And I did kill him. And you're saying it was all for nothing? And he's like, well, no, it's not, you know, it's just like not that big a deal. He says, one, yes, you did lose your apprentice, but that was your choice. But the eye is no big deal, man. Like, you know, you could, uh, uh, any healing spell will restore you, you know, no, no worries, right? And I'm like, no, this, you know, I can't do that, man. I, you know, I, Ace and Shardgale, chose to kill this character, and he fought for this, right? So I'm not going to have my eye restored, and I'm going to take a minus two, and, and he goes, oh, okay, no big deal. And I said, and I'm going to take a minus two on my decks going forward, you know, because I'm half blind. And he goes, oh, no, no, and Ted goes, no, you don't need to take a, a minus two on your decks. It's no big deal. And I'm like, well, it doesn't make any story sense to have one less eye and be as equally capable. And he's like, all right, your choice, right? And so I did. And I, and you know, at that point I went from a 12 decks to a 10, uh, to a 10 decks, right? And I had to wait four more levels before I got a feat or an attribute bump. And I used my attribute bump to bring my decks back up, right? But I got, but I lost a feat. I could have traded in that, that attribute bump for a feat. And it really significantly slowed my guy down and ruined the path of the feats I wanted to get the meta magic that I wanted, right? And and to get the really, you know, pimped out wizard build that I that I should have, right? But I made story decisions, right? Now, what happened from there is we came across the robe of eyes. I also got a really dark, super goth female. Uh, wizard apprentice who replaced Obsid Strandon, who carried a, a jar of dirt with her every, a jar of worms everywhere that, that she went, filled with wor with dirt and worms. She's super dark. Her name was Boken, and um, and it re she really affected Asin, and he started to really go down a dark path. And because of that, I lost my master, Trisgar the Bold, who rejected me as his student, right? Or actually. Yeah, like the last time I talked to me, like beat me upside the head with a with a stick. It was really bad, right? Also, my alignment was shifted because Ted said, you know, killing this mayor character is so dark that it shifts you from lawful good to neutral good. Totally accepted that. He was well within his rights to make that change. But I lost my eye. I lost my alignment. I lost my apprentice, right? 
And then later I came across the robe of eyes, right? And um, and somebody at the table was like, yeah, yeah, it's not even a big deal that you lost your eye, Scott. Like, what do you even need the other one for? And it was a joke at the table, but immediately I was like, oh my gosh, that's it, right? And we were actually, we had gone back to Dralic and we were in the city of Dralic when I got the robe of eyes, like right after I got the robe of eyes, we were in the city of Dralic when somebody made that joke. And I was like, this isn't coincidence that I'm in the city of Dralic where I killed that mayor character and you know, where I lost, you know, where I lost my first eye. So me and Boken, my, you know, Asen and Boken went to that same alley where I'd had that fought, where I, where I had that fight, where I lost my left eye and I had her stab out my right eye and I became the eyeless seer. And that only came from losing a minus two on my decks. It only came from choosing not to be healed. It only came from allowing my character to be impacted by the new apprentice that he had to replace the apprentice that he had lost. It only came by, you know, role-playing my new lower alignment, which was neutral good rather than lawful good. It was, you know, there was just a ton of sacrifice on the road to becoming the eyeless seer. But that's why, in my opinion, there is no middle path. You choose story or you choose numbers. You must choose. And in my opinion, if you want a truly epic, awesome character, choose story. Build doesn't matter compared to story. Take care.